Welcome back to our Tempo Storm deck introduction series, featuring Cubelock, a new and powerful take on the Control Warlock archetype. Cubelock has quickly exploded into the meta shortly after the release of Kobolds and Catacombs, with many success stories both on the ladder and in tournaments. With the pure power that Cubelock holds, players expected it to be nerfed alongside other decks in patch 10.2. Surprisingly, it managed to dodge the nerf hammer and will likely become the best deck in standard. At the start of the new expansion, players began experimenting with Control Warlock since it received so many new tools like Void Lord and the Lesser Amethyst Spellstone. Sadly, due to the large amount of Rosaka's priests on the ladder, Control Warlock struggled. After further experimentation, players began to include cards such as Carnivorous Cube and Doomguard in order to have a way to kill slower decks thus giving Warlock a chance against Priest. In past metas, heavy Death Rattle cards were typically too slow to see play, but due to Dark Pact, Death Rattles can be activated instantaneously, removing the drawback of tempo loss and potential silences. Several players have found success with Cube Lock since its debut on the ladder. Dog was one of the first players to showcase the deck and its true potential to a larger audience, and from there, many other pro players have used its strength to secure high ranks on the ladder, most notably in the January rat race by our own pro players Muzzy and Reynad. Cubelock aims to use all of its resources and removal tools to survive in the early game so that it can reach its power turns. The main difference you'll find in Cubelock as opposed to Control Warlock is the inclusion of cards such as Faceless Manipulator and, of course, Carnivorous Cube. These cards help give Cubelock several game plans in the form of creating multiple Void Lords to survive against aggressive decks or even duplicating Doom Guards in order to push a large amount of damage without much interaction from your opponent. Against aggro decks, look for Mistress of Mixtures, Possessed Lackey, and early removal cards like Defile and Mortal Coil. Mistress of Mixtures allows you not only to fight for the board, but also hero power aggressively in the early turns of the game while keeping your health total high. Cards such as Defile and Hellfire will allow you to keep your opponent's minions off the board and stall for you to develop threats of your own. Finally, Possessed Lackey will allow you to cheat out your demons like Void Lord and Doomguard much earlier than you normally would be able to summon them. Aggro decks typically cannot answer an early Void Lord unless they tech and draw a Spellbreaker. Against control decks, you typically want to prioritize mulliganing for the cards that let you cheat out your demons such as Skull of the Manari and Possessed Lackey. In some slower control matchups, such as Warlock Mirrors, you should also look for Blood Reaver Gul'dan, as this card allows you to change your game plan into fatiguing your opponent. Depending on your choice of tech cards, Mountain Giants are also another strong card to look for in the opening hand, as slower decks like Raza Priest struggle to deal with them. Players are often afraid of life tapping in the middle of the game, as they fear they're losing too much health. However, due to the high amount of healing in the deck, you can be more liberal with your life total. On that note, do be careful of your health total when facing fast aggro classes like Paladin or Hunter, as they can oftentimes suddenly hit you with a large amount of burst damage. When trying to go for a large board play with Carnivorous Cube, try to play Dark Pact in the same turn as you play the cube, as it'll prevent you from being punished by silence or bounce effects. When you plan on drawing a card with both your hero power and Kobold Librarian in the same turn, unless you're looking for a specific card, you should always hero power first as it increases the chance of the damage from Librarian buffing your spellstone. If you're playing against an aggro deck, try to hold Kobold Librarian to give you a 1 health minion to play alongside Defile, as this will make it much more difficult for your opponent to play around the 2 mana board clear. While saving Faceless Manipulators and Prince Taldrum for your cubes can be tempting, don't tunnel vision on using it solely for the Doomguard combo, as you can be extremely versatile with what you make a copy of. For example, against slower decks, you can copy your Mountain Giants, as this will add a significant level of pressure on your opponent. Against faster decks, you can also copy your opponent's minions in order to stick something on the board. On a similar note, saving your cubes only for combo pieces may not always be correct either, as they can be used flexibly for different scenarios. Some situations will call for duplicating your mountain giants or healing a large amount from Mistress of Mixtures. Due to the nature of control decks, there are oftentimes many different tech slots that you can use to hedge against different matchups. Depending on what you're facing on ladder or targeting in a tournament, you'll want to adjust your deck accordingly. 
Against aggro, some players opt to play Plated Beetle as it allows you to fight for the board and also offers a minor healing swing. Another card that can help is Doomsayer, as this can effectively flip the entire state of the game if played at a good time. If you're facing a large amount of aggro paladin, you may consider adding in a gluttonous ooze to combat their large weapon pool. Ooze can also be good when facing secret mage, but shouldn't be put in solely for this matchup. Against slower decks, you'll usually want to opt away from removal-based tech cards and move toward running more threats. The tech card that we see the most of currently is Double Mountain Giant. Due to the large hands that Q-Block will have early, it's not unlikely for a Mountain Giant to be played on turn 4. With all of the duplications in the deck, if the Giant is left unchecked, it'll put a lot of pressure on your opponent early on. Another tech choice that can help in the matchup against Raza Priest would be to run Spirit Singer Umbra. In the original lists, this legendary enabled a large amount of burst when played alongside Carnivorous Cube on Doom Guards, but due to the rarity of this scenario occurring, players chose to cut it. Finally, if you're running into a lot of big priests, you can consider running one or two Twisting Nethers, as they'll give you the ability to fatigue the big priest and just run them out of resources. Some of you may be watching this thinking that Q-Block is too strong, too flexible, and you're probably wondering how you can go about beating it. While Q-Block is definitely one of the strongest decks in the current meta, especially after patch 10.2, it still has its bad matchups. Typically, the best answer to Q-Block would be a well-piloted Razakas Priest while it's still viable. When played optimally, Razakas Priest is the best deck in the game and can hand Q-Block a defeat. In order to make sure your Raza Priest deck is tuned to beat Q-Block, make sure that you're playing both Prophet Velen and Mind Blast, as the sudden burst can often catch your opponent off guard and quickly end the game. Once the upcoming nerfs to Razakas Priest go live, Q-Block will be losing one of its harder matchups and will thrive even further on ladder. There's also other decks that do fairly well against Q-Block, such as Miracle Rogue. Cards such as Sap and Vile Spine counters the large, costly minions that Q-Block runs. Sadly, Miracle Rogue is not in the best of places at the moment, but it is a fun alternative to other more dominating decks and may make a return in the post-patch meta. Another deck that can handle Q-Block decently is Face Hunter. Although fairly new to the latter this meta, Face Hunter is able to build a board and apply pressure in the early turns, all while chipping away at their opponent's health with their hero power. Even if the Q-Block stabilizes behind a Void Lord, Hunter has kill commands to finish them off. Thanks to all of the powerful new cards that Warlock received in the recent expansion, Q-Block is a powerful new archetype that is here to stay. With the balance changes being implemented soon, Q-Block will be losing its worst matchup and will gain a lot of strength. It's fairly likely that these nerfs could push the deck to the top of tier lists, potentially being in a tier all of its own. In the upcoming card rotation, only Mistress of Mixtures will be leaving standard, putting Q-Block in the position of becoming an oppressive deck. It seems that Q-Block will be contesting Handlock, Demon Lock, and Reno Lock for the title of the strongest control Warlock deck to have ever existed in Hearthstone's history. On that note, this will conclude our deck introduction on Q-Block. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to like it, and feel free to comment below if you have any further questions or suggestions on what deck you think we should cover next. Don't forget to subscribe in order to stay up to date on all of Tempo Storm's Hearthstone content. Thank you for watching!